This is a quick and simple guide for how to install Ghost Tools on a Raspberry Pi. There's a text file attached to the YouTube video and inside the Zoom chat. If you download it, inside of it, each command is labeled with a number and the command. You want to do these in order of their number, the same way I do them. The first piece of software we'll need on your Windows machine is Raspberry Pi Imager. If you're on Linux, you can also use a program called Balana Etcher. We'll be using Imager for this. Click Download for Windows or whatever your respective operating system is. Once you've got Raspberry Pi Imager installed, open it up and click Choose OS. Go to Raspberry Pi OS Other and select Raspberry Pi OS Lite. Choose your storage device, in my case it's a 16GB SanDisk card plugged into the USB port, and click on Write. Click Yes and let it go. Once it's done, go ahead and click Continue. The next thing we need to do is access the boot partition on the SD card. So you'll need to pull out the card and plug it back in for the boot partition to show up inside of Windows. Once inside the boot partition, we need to create two files. The first file is going to be a text file, and we're going to name it SSH. Make sure you delete the file extension that says .txt. It should be named only SSH and nothing else. Windows will ask you if you want to rename the extension, and go ahead and click Yes. Now create a new text document in your program of choice. Inside of this, you want to paste the Wi-Fi configuration entry from the text file provided in the YouTube video and the Zoom link. Replace the X's with your Wi-Fi SSID and the PSK entry with your password. Click Save and save as WPA underscore supplicant dot CONF. Drop this file into the boot partition of your SD card and eject the SD card. The next step is to plug the SD card into the Raspberry Pi. Also, plug in the Raspberry Pi's power supply at this point. Once the Raspberry Pi has been powered on for about two minutes, you'll want to find the Raspberry Pi's IP address on your Wi-Fi network. Here I am inside my Xfinity control panel, finding an entry called Raspberry Pi, all one word, all lowercase, that represents the Pi connected to your Wi-Fi. You'll want to find the IP address. In my case, it was 10.0.0.128. The next thing you'll need to do is open up Command Prompt in Window or Terminal in Linux. Inside Windows, we're going to run a command to connect to the Raspberry Pi over the Wi-Fi. We're going to type in ssh space pi, pi, at, the at symbol, and then you're going to type in the IP address you discovered from going to your router's control panel or by doing a network scan. It's going to ask you this question about authenticity. Just click yes. It says this because it's the first time connecting. Now you'll need to enter in the Raspberry Pi's password. By default, this is the word raspberry, all lowercase. And if you did it right, some text should fill in and you should see a green line that says pi at raspberry pi. That means you're connected via SSH, and now it's time to run a whole bunch of commands to install the RTL SDR driver and Ghost Tools. The first command you'll need to run is sudo apt update. This will scan for updates on the Raspberry Pi. Second command is sudo apt upgrade. This will install the updates that it found on the Raspberry Pi. The next step is to install the dependencies for Ghost Tools. So we're going to type in sudo apt install git build essential cmake libusb libopencv and libproject. These are all provided in the text file as entry number three. The next command, which is command number four, is going to be git clone and the URL of the RTLSDR driver. Once it's cloned, Type in cd, which means change directory, we'll be using that command a lot today, and librtlsdr. Once we've changed directories into librtlsdr, we're going to type in the command to make a new folder. It's called mkdir, make dir. We're going to type in make dir build, then we're going to change directory into the build folder, then we're going to paste command number 8 from the list, the cmake command, which will start compiling everything. Once it's finished, we'll type in sudo make minus j2 install, and this will install the driver. Next, we're going to run command number 10, which will copy some files over. Then we're going to type in sudo ldconfig. For command number 12, we're going to be blacklisting the Linux default driver for the dongle. Since these dongles are normally TV tuners, the Linux kernel will come with a TV tuner driver. 
but we don't want that. We want the RTL SDR driver. So we are going to run command number 12. Once we've ran command number 12, we're going to type in sudo reboot to reboot the Pi. This will ensure everything installs correctly. Once you've run the reboot command, you'll get disconnected. Wait about 30 seconds and then just push the up arrow key in Windows to run the command connect command again. Enter in your password and you'll be reconnected. After the reboot, type in git clone and the URL of Go's tools. Change directory into Go's tools. Next, we're going to make directory build, so mkdir build, cd build, go into the build directory. We're going to run git submodule init and git submodule update dash dash recursive. So we'll make sure that all the GitHub dependencies are installed. Then we're going to run the cmake command to compile Go's tools. Once cmake is done, we're going to type in sudo make minus j2 install one more time. Then we're going to type in cd to go back to the root directory. And we're going to type sudo touch goes recv.conf. This will be the config file for goes receive, which is a sub module of goes tools. Then we're going to type in sudo nano goes receive.conf. Nano is the terminal text editor for Raspberry Pi. It'll open up a black window like this with no text. Inside the provided text file that we give you in Zoom and on YouTube, there's an entry for the config file. You're going to want to copy all the text, starting with the line that says demodulator, and ending with the line that ends with localhost 8125. Paste that whole chunk of information into the text file. Push Control and S to save, and then Control and X to exit out of Nano. And at this point, you're done compiling the Ghost Tools software. From here, you can connect your antenna to your RTL SDR using a Type-N to SMA adapter. In the next couple slides, we'll show how to finalize the project and start downloading images.